Hello, my name is Dr. Sarah Freilich, and I'm an assistant professor of practice in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at Cleveland State University. One of my roles at CSU is that I coordinate our calculus sequence. So I'm going to talk to you today about how I've used open access materials to help coordinated calculus run more smoothly. At CSU, there are 10 to 12 sections of Calculus 1 and 2, which run concurrently each semester. These sections are tightly coordinated, and we use a common syllabus, common homework system, and exams, which are written by me. The faculty teaching these sections vary every semester and can include tenured and tenure-track faculty, lecturers, adjunct faculty, as well as the occasional visiting professor. So over the last three years, I've worked with 21 different calculus instructors. Our calculus courses also have embedded supplemental instruction sessions where students meet three times a week with STEM peer teachers who are undergraduates who have done well in the course previously. Each course section is assigned two to three peer teachers and enrolls 30 to 40 students. So in total, between three and 400 students enroll in either calculus one or two each semester at CSU. With that backdrop then, I think it's clear why having a centralized repository of information pertaining to calculus is so important. And in particular, it's important that this information be openly accessible. So what I did was make a website for calculus at CSU using Google Sites. I needed to be able to share essential information with instructors so that they know what content should be covered and to what depth. With the group of faculty teaching calculus changing each semester, I needed an easy way to onboard instructors who might be new to teaching calculus at CSU. If the instructor of record for a particular section changes at the last minute, or if there's a newly hired faculty member teaching calculus, I don't want to have to wait for them to be given access to our learning management system in order to share information with them. Our student body is also diverse. We have many first-generation students, high school students taking calculus for college credit, non-traditional students who are returning to the classroom after some time, and transfer students joining from local community colleges. For all of our students, I want calculus at CSU to be as demystified and transparent as possible, and I want our students to have access to their course materials before, during, and after the course officially ends. I already mentioned the supplemental instruction leaders who support our calculus students in the classroom. There are also other support services on campus, such as the Math Learning Center, which provides free drop-in tutoring for math students. The tutors working in the MLC also need to know what is expected in our calculus courses. Now we'll go over to take a tour of the calculus website that I made. I used Google Sites to create the website because it's free to use and very intuitive. As we explore the website, you'll notice two open access resources, which I want to draw your attention to. We use the OpenStax Calculus Textbook. OpenStax.org has a library of free textbooks that cover a variety of subjects, and we'll look through some of those. I really love the OpenStax books because students can make a free account on the website and save highlighted and annotated version of the text that they can go back and study from. You can also download OpenStax books as Word documents if you want to remix or edit the content to better align with your course. The other resource I want to bring your attention to is MyOpenMath. This is a free online homework system. It's primarily used for math classes, but there's also some content available for physics and chemistry. This is the website that I made on Google Sites for Calculus 1. The course is divided into four units, but before we get into the course content, I want to show you some of the extras that I've included with the website. 
So first we'll look at the Frequently Asked Questions page. Some of the information included here are instructions for how to access the online homework system, MyOpenMath, which we'll look at in a minute. Advice for what to do if you are struggling in your calculus class. As well as some tips for visiting an instructor during office hours. So if a student wants to go to office hours, but they're not quite sure how to go about that or what to ask when they show up at office hours. So I have some suggestions for how to get the conversation started with your instructor. I also have a page for additional resources. So we have some resources available at CSU. Of course, your instructor's office hours should be your first stop. Um, there's also a drop-in study center on the 14th floor of Rhodes Tower, the Math Learning Center, which provides free drop-in peer tutoring, as well as the Academic Success Center, which provides general study skill advice. There are also links to other open access resources available for free online. So Khan Academy, for example, as well as some other free online textbooks and some YouTube channels that are popular with students. I also have a section for reviewing pre-calculus topics because it's often the pre-calculus that is um, causing a problem for students more so than the calculus topics themselves. So if I have a student who um, maybe hasn't taken algebra or trigonometry in some time, I can refer them here to, um, to help them review those topics. I also have a page called Peer Advice. This is one of my favorite pages on the website. It's a list of quotes that I've collected from students who at first struggled and then succeeded in their calculus class at CSU. So all of the students that I've quoted here improved their test scores by at least 20 points. And in one case, they improved 42 points on their exams over the course of the semester. So I'll read one of these quotes. I think I started to do better after I not only completed the homework, but completed it and took a minute to understand how I got the answer. Showing up to class is not enough. You have to do the work at home. Another thing that worked for me was breaking down each process into steps so I knew exactly what to look for in a problem and what to do. If you put in the work and dedication to studying, you'll get the grades you deserve. So I like to share this site with students after they get their first exam handed back. And for any students who maybe didn't do as well as they were hoping that they would do, some of these quotes, I hope, provide inspiration that it's actually quite normal to struggle at first until you kind of figure out how to study and how to approach the course. Um, you know, it's completely possible to bring your grades up and it's actually quite common for that to happen. So all of these quotes, these were actually just taken from um, one single semester that I taught calculus, so you see how many students were able to improve their test scores quite significantly. So we'll go back to the home page and take a look at the course content. So as I said, it's divided into four units, so we can look at just one of the units. And for each unit, I have learning objectives listed. These are meant to encompass all the outcomes that students might be assessed on in any unit test or the final exam. 
So students might not look at these, but definitely instructors do, and it helps us to all stay on the same page regarding expectations for assessment. What students tend to use more are these review problems. So for every unit, I have a set of review problems, and these are meant to be test style questions. So this shows students the level of question that could show up on their exam. So this is sort of the level of complexity, the types of questions that, that they might see, the wording that they can expect um, on exams. So there's a document like this for every unit, and at the end of the document, there are solutions. So students can try the problems out on their own, and then if their answer doesn't match the answer at the end of the document, hopefully they will reach out for assistance. Also, I have here a collection of worksheets that are available for the supplemental instruction leaders to use with students. as well as tests from past semesters. So again, I'm trying to make calculus as transparent as possible. We're not trying to trick students or play any games. We want them to be successful. So um, I make all the, the recent exams available for them so that they can see exactly what to expect on their exam and there will be no surprises. I also have a list of topics covered in each unit, and this is where students can click on a particular topic and they'll be taken to an embedded textbook link. As I mentioned before, if a student makes a free account with OpenStax, then they will be able to highlight the text so they can make color-coded highlights, add notes, save their notes, and then these will be collected for them right here, and they can go and review the highlights that they've made and the notes that they have included in their own personalized, annotated version of the text. Another thing that I really like about the OpenStax books is that they have examples throughout where the solution is hidden. So this is a great way to read a math textbook. You read the explanation and then you try a problem on your own. You can click this link and the solution in full detail will be displayed for you so that you can check your work and see if you've solved the problem the correct way. I will take you over to the OpenStax website just for a second to show you the variety of subjects that OpenStax provides free textbooks for. So you can see here there are all these different business classes that OpenStax has textbooks for, computer science, humanities, biology, chemistry, physics, all these different courses in math, social sciences, nursing. There's a lot of material here. And each of the book, each of the books comes also with some supplemental instructor resources. So there are packages to embed the textbook in your learning management system. There are also um, PowerPoint slides that you can download and then edit for your use, as well as the books are completely customizable, so you can download a Word document, edit the content, remix it to suit exactly what you need. Yeah, so I'm a big proponent of OpenStax. And... So the last thing that I want to show you is the homework system. So 
I'm going to click over here to My Open Map. And as I said, this is primarily for math courses, but they also do have content for chemistry and physics. So I'm going to go into the Calculus 1 course for this semester. And this is the instructor view. But I'll go over into student view so that you see exactly what your students would see. The reason I love using my open math, besides the fact that it's free for students to use, um, the other thing that I really appreciate about it is that it is completely customizable. So you can make the site look exactly how you want it to look. So I've included here a welcome message, which also has a link to the calculus website that we were just looking at. I have a block of information here with office hours and the syllabus so that students can view their instructor's office hours right here when they're working on their homework and they decide they need help, they can go and find the office hours very easily. Um, I have the unit, I have the course in the homework system also divided into units, just like on the website. So we can go into unit one. And for each unit, there's a discussion board where students can ask questions. And then there are the homework assignments. And at the bottom of the page, I have a calendar as well. So students can keep track of what is coming up that they need to, that they need to do. So we can go into one of the homework assignments just to see what it looks like. Um, this assignment was already due earlier in the semester, but I have the course set up so that after each assignment is due, students can still go back into the assessment and try the questions again for ungraded practice so they can practice as much as they want. So this is in practice mode right now. I have instructions here before the first question is displayed. I have a little reminder that I typed out of the definition of continuity and a reminder that when students are completing in-class quizzes and exams, they would be expected to use this definition of continuity as they're solving the problems. So you can also include like an embedded video here if you want, if you have a video that you want students to watch before they start solving the problems. Everything can be customized. So we can click through a few of these problems and in each problem I have a link to the textbook. So that will take the student back to um, OpenStax if they need to read a little bit more before they attempt the question. And the questions also allow you to attach various help features. So this question we can post to the discussion forum, right? If we have a question about this problem it copies the question so that everyone knows which question is being asked about. And then the student can type their question out and they can even post anonymously if they don't feel comfortable putting their name attached to their question in the discussion board. It can be posted anonymously and then other students or instructors can go in and reply to their question and everyone will be able to kind of benefit from that discussion. You can also attach a written explanation of the problem. So here's a written example of a similar question that's kind of um, giving an explanation of how we should think about this problem. And you can include video assistance as well. So here there's a link to an explanation of continuity and how to solve a similar kind of problem using the definition of continuity.
So that is my open map. There's a little bit of a learning curve to, um, to using the site, but it's fairly intuitive. And um, I think the customizability is really unbeatable. I want to thank the CSU Michael Schwartz Library in conjunction with the Center for Faculty Excellence and the Center for eLearning, which supported this work through a textbook affordability grant. If you would like to reach out to me, feel free to contact me at s.fralick at csuohio.edu.